Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley, and today I am so excited to bring you 15 4th of July tear tray ideas. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm a little obsessed with tear tray and making decor for tear trays. So I cannot wait to show you what I have in store. But first, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. All right, so we are going to get started, but I am warning you, this is a long one. So you just sit back, pop some popcorn, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's get started. For my first DIY, I decided that I was going to make some sparklers or some fireworks. So I saw a lot of crafters do a lot of different ideas, but I really wanted to come up with my own. So when I saw these little finger shooters at the Dollar Tree, I picked up two packs, although you could probably get away with just using one. So I went ahead and took them out of their packaging, and then I pulled off the little yellow things <laughs> hanging off. Next, I took three of them, and I'm only going to be using three, and I kind of just measured three different lengths and three different sizes. Then by using this little knife, I simply cut them down, and this was so easy to cut. Once I had them all cut down to the right size, I gave them all a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. After they were all dry, I took the tallest one and I painted that with red paint. Now here I am using acrylic paint, but later on in the video I actually switched to crimson, which is a Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to show you why in, in a little bit. Then I took my medium sized firework and I painted that with my Ocean Waverly chalk paint. And then I kept the smallest one in just the white. After that, I went ahead and used my hot glue to glue them all together. I put the tallest and the medium in the back and then the smallest in the front. After the glue was dry, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I brushed over all of my fireworks. Now for this, 4th of July season, I am going for Rustic Americana, so I'm going to distress all of my pieces. If you don't like that look, you can absolutely skip this stuff. You definitely don't have to do it. After that, I took my blue, white, and red twine, and I wrapped it around the middle of my fireworks, cut it off, and then tied a knot. Next, I took these foam stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I put a blue star on each of the ends of my twine. For the tops of my fireworks, I actually had this wire left over from a project that I did and it's kind of like wrapped in paper. So I just cut them down and used my needle nose pliers to flip the top under to make it kind of wound. And then I made sure to put two stems in each firework and I made one taller than the other. And I did use hot glue to tack them in. Then to finish this off, I used a makeup sponge and my Waverly Antique Wax and just dabbed it right over the wire because I wanted them to look rustic as well. I love how these little fireworks came out. I think that it was so creative and also so simple and probably would only cost you a dollar. For my next DIY, I'm going to take these utensils and I am going to keep these really simple but when I saw these, I thought that they were perfect just to throw in like a mug or something like that on a tiered tray. So the first thing I did was I took the spatula in the middle and I wrapped around the blue twine several times and then tied it in a knot and glued it in the back. Thank you. 
Next, I took this red and white baker's twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree and I wrapped that around the other two utensils. Finally, I took one more piece of the blue twine and wrapped it around the back and tied it in the front. I added one star on each of the strands. And I love this little set. I think, like I said, it's gonna be perfect just to throw in a mug or in a vase or just kind of use them as space fillers on the tiered tray. Now, unlike my other videos, you're going to have to wait till the end to see the final reveal of all these projects. So hang with me. I know it's a long one, but I promise it will be absolutely worth it. All right, DIY number three. We're gonna make some risers for my tiered tray. So I picked up this pack of Foam Star Wands that I got in the party section, and I pulled off the little plastic stick on two of them. Next, I'm gonna give each of them a good coat of the Waverly chalk paint in white. Now because these are a little flimsy on the back and like I said I'm going to use these on risers, I decided to cut up some mini craft sticks and just hot glue them on the back just to give it extra support. Now I am not going to and I would not recommend putting anything heavy on these. These are more or less just for decoration but something light would be perfect on these. But I just wanted to add these just in case and that way so it didn't look so floppy. After both my stars had all their sticks down, I took this big pack of colored beads that I got from the Dollar Tree and I pulled out all of the biggest size red beads and blue beads and then the medium size. And then there were three of each of those. So after I pulled them all out, I just kind of arranged them. I put three of each color and size on, or I'm sorry, three of one color in each size. <laughs> on each of my stars. So as you can see, I'm hot gluing three big blues on there. And then I wanted it to be more raised, so I'm taking the mediums and hot gluing those on top of the big beads. And then I do the same one on the stars. Now, ideally, I would have put the beads on all of the points of the stars, but I didn't have enough. So I'm just gonna go with this. And like I said, just these will be perfect for something light. To finish these off, of course, you know, I gotta distress them, so I took my Waverly Antique Wax and my favorite distressing brush, and I just dry brushed over it. And if it got a little dark, I went ahead and put the white chalk paint on it as well. I love those. For my next DIY, I took this pack of four mini dice that I got from the Dollar Tree, and we're only gonna use three of them. So on one of them, I went ahead and I painted in red paint, and as you can see, I'm using a skewer to hold it so I don't get paint all over my fingers, although I do anyways, but there's just a tip for you. Then I paint one in the Waverly chalk paint in white, and then one in the ocean blue chalk paint. Now here's where I switch to the red chalk paint, and I'm gonna show you why. Look at the difference between acrylic paint and chalk paint. That red is two coats of red acrylic paint, and that Waverly white paint is one coat, and that blue is one coat. So all the time I get questions, what's the difference between acrylic paint and chalk paint? That's it right there. It's thicker and it covers better. After all my dice were painted and dried, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and my favorite distressing brush again, and I distressed each one of these. After that, I took this sheet of foam stickers, and for 4th of July, glitter doesn't really bother me. You'll see that I do tone it down, but I think that 4th of July is such a fun holiday and sparkly holiday, so glitter doesn't bother me. But what I did was I wanted to use one letter on each of the die, so I'm just using my knife to cut them apart. And then this, this is how I doll them down. I just go ahead and put Waverly Antique Wax on top. Now, <laughs> I do mess, I do realize that I messed up here because I wanted one of each color, red, white, and blue, on each one of the dice or one dice. So you're gonna see me pause for a second because I realized I messed up the color. So I'm actually gonna go back and paint the U with white 
paint and then that way I have one of each color it'll make sense here in one second but I went ahead and put the S on the white and then the A on the blue and then I'm going to paint the U with the white paint and then I'm actually going to cut the you can see right behind my hand that there's another USA in red so I'm going to use that A instead but I would highly recommend if you're going to do this to paint the U while it's still on the sheet. That way you don't get the paint on the die. If I would have thought about it, that's definitely what I would have done. But there we go. I just cut off the red A and then I applied it to the blue block. Now I am just distressing the tops of each of those letters and now it's time to stack them. So I went ahead and hot glued them kind of... Um, not not straight up and down but kind of twisted and that way it looked like just a block display I guess and then I'm gonna add one of those little sparkly white stars on top and put some Waverly antique wax to finish it off all right moving right along into number five and this one is so easy I picked up this white spoon rest from the Dollar Tree and these napkins and I took one out and then I pulled it apart so it's only one ply so you want to make it as thin as possible after that I cut off one of the squares on the of the napkin and then I cut the napkin square in half because I needed to extend the stripes you'll see <laughs> what I'm talking about so after I figure out how I want it to look I put a generous amount of Mod Podge on my spoon and then I just rub it on there after that I lay the top part with the stars down at the top of my spoon oh I was showing you there that my foam brush just totally broke <laughs> okay so now I'm pushing it down now this did wrinkle um, but that's okay because it made it look a little ru more rustic and you know me I love that I am NOT going to be using this for you know what it's actually supposed to be used for this is for decorative purposes only so I don't I'm not worried about like sanitation and it being food safe or anything so now I took that second piece and I don't know what the heck I was thinking the whole point was to line up those stripes and as you can see I didn't but it was too late if I if I pulled it off it was gonna rip so after that I just put that bottom piece on put some more Mod Podge over it and lightly rub it because you do not want to rip it and then you want to go over the edges as well after that was dry, I took my sand block and I sanded the excess paper off of my little spoon rest and just cleaned it up basically. Then to finish it, I of course took my antique wax and a makeup sponge and I just dabbed the edges of my spoon and then eventually I do go in the middle and I really love how this came out. Now if I could change something besides lining up the stripes, what I would do is because you can see where they, the two pieces come apart, I would actually take hair that instead because I think it's easier to camouflage but other than that I really love that next of course we have a little gnome so I picked this gnome up from the Dollar Tree and the first thing I did was paint the hat with white paint now you can actually I think you can skip this step because I when I started this I really did not know how I was gonna decorate him I just kind of, you know, I, I always start off with white paint because it's easy to paint over if I change my mind. But I did go ahead and paint his hat white. After that, I took a small brush and that crimson Waverly wax and I painted his shirt with that. And in a minute, we're going to pick up on some Santa Claus vibes. So I knew I had to do something about that. <laughs> After his shirt was painted, I took my Waverly chalk paint in white and painted his pants with that. And like I said, here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> but don't worry, we're going to make this look more patriotic. So then I, of course, I changed my mind. So that's why I said you can skip that step because that hat was actually blue. Unless your hat's not blue, then you're going to have to paint it blue. So I did go ahead and paint it with that ocean blue chalk paint. And then once that dried, I took my white paint marker and I just drew dots all over the hat. Next I took a little glitter heart that I had left over from Valentine's Day and I cut it down so it would fit on the hat and then I hot glued it right in the front. Then I took this pack of American flag picks that I got from Hobby Lobby and by using a baby wipe and a, a my Waverly antique wax I 
went ahead and stained my the stick of it and then I hot glued it right in front of him so it kind of looked like he was holding it. And I think this little guy came out so cute and super patriotic. Next up, we of course cannot forget about a beaded garland. So I'm gonna be using these white and natural beads that I already had in my stash and some white twine and then I'm actually gonna be using those square beads. I did not end up using that other pack of beads. So now I am going to just pull the blue beads and the red beads and I'm just going to separate them. Next, it's time to start threading them through. So I put a little hot glue at the end so it was easier for me to put the beads on. And then the pattern I followed was white bead, red bead, natural bead, blue bead. And then I just did that until all of my natural beads and white beads were gone because I had less of those than I did the red and blue. But I just did that until they were all threaded. Now, of course, I was one white bead short, so I grabbed a 20 millimeter bead, which I do have linked in the description box below from Amazon, and I just painted it white and then threaded it through. After that, I tied it in the knot at the end, and now it was time to make a tassel. So I grabbed my white my red, white, and blue twine, and I just wrapped them several times around a sand block going the long way. I like to use the sand block because I like the length of it. I like it for a tassel. So I just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped until I got the thickness that I wanted. After that, I pulled off my tassel and I cut it off from the spools. And then by using the loop in the tassel, I tied one of the ends through the beaded garland end. I hope that made sense. So I took the end of the garland and looped it through the, the opening of the tassel. And I just tied it in a simple knot. Then I'm gonna take a smaller piece of white twine and I'm going to put it near the top but not all the way at the top. That way it gives it that tassel look and I'm gonna wrap that around several times and tie it off. Now I do go in with some hot glue and tack everything down. Next, I push my beads all the way down so the bead next to the tassel is flush against it and it's nice and tight. Then I cut off the bottom of the tassel and make all of those strings um, even at the bottom. And now I'm just kind of cleaning it up and cutting off any of those extra uh, strings on my tassel and then tacking it all down. Next, I went ahead and applied some hot glue to the other end just to make sure that the beads don't move. And then we're going to make a little piece to tie on to that end. I took this pack of black chalk board tags that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut it down so that way it was proportional to my garland. As you can see, my garland's not very long, so I did have to make my tag a little smaller so it would just look right and look better. So after I got that all cut down, I went ahead and cut off the string on the 
the chalkboard tag, although I probably could have left it on. Then I took the other end of the garland and I put it through and then I hot glued the string down to the chalkboard tag to attach it to my beaded garland. After that, I took these stencils that I found in Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree and I cut out the map of the United States. I will not recommend these stencils. They were terrible. They were so hard. It took me forever to scrape this and there were still pieces missing from it. So I do not rec recommend. In fact, I tried doing some stars and everything and I didn't, I cut that all out because it just was going to take up too much time, but it was, I just do not, do not recommend. But finally, once I pulled up the United States, I took my white chalk marker and I just went around it and gave it some stitch marks. I really wanted to do a lot more of this tag because I wanted to use those stars that are on that sheet too. Like I said, I just didn't have the patience for it, so I gave up. But I still really love how it came out. There's my beaded garland. For the next DIY, I'm taking this shiplap looking picture holder and that I got at the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to take it out of its wrapper and then by using a screwdriver, I'm going to take off the clip and then I'm going to pull off the bow. Now I thought by simply sanding this that this hole was small enough that it would cover it, but you're gonna see in a minute that I realized it wasn't going to cover, so I'm gonna fill it. But So I start painting it with the white Waverly chalk paint, and then here's where I get my little spackling from the Dollar Tree, fill the hole with that, and then I sand it off once it dried. And then I finished painting this with one good coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Next, I took my ocean blue chalk paint and I'm going to draw the square up top where the stars go. And my square is not perfect. I wanted this to kind of look handmade and homemade and rustic. So I just did my best and I did switch to a smaller brush to kind of clean up the edges a little bit too. And then once I did that, I just eyeballed the red stripes and started paint, painting those. Now, what I did was I actually painted half of each of those slats with the red paint. And then I'm also using a paintbrush that's nice and square to help me paint the red. So you'll see in a minute what I mean, but this was so super easy to do. It, it was really fun to make too. I, I have really grown to love painting. I used to be someone who was afraid of painting. I know that sounds weird, but if, if something required painting, I try to do anything I could to get out of it and kind of, you know, just be lazy about it. But I absolutely love painting now I cannot get enough and it's just really fun and relaxing to do so as you see that's where I say I'm just kind of painting half of each of those slats now of course I don't have enough room to do 13 stripes and 50 stars but that's why I said this is gonna be more Americana and um, so but I just go ahead and I paint that and then after I'm done with the stripes I take a stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree that it has a ton of star shapes on it, like sizes on it. And I'm just gonna use my Waverly chalk paint in white and a foam brush, and I'm just going to stencil all these stars on. Now, I do dry the stars in between, that way they don't get messed up when I put my stencil back on and I wipe off my stencil, but I just do this until I fill that entire square, and I believe I got three rows put on and then as you can see at the bottom there my blue where the blue is at the bottom it does not match up with that red stripe so I just added some white to even it out and that fixed it that fixed it and made it look really good Then of course, after I made some touch-ups, I took my distressing brush and my Waverly Antique Wax and dry brushed over the flag. And I really loved the rustic look that this gave, 
but it wasn't until I sanded it until I fell in love with this. I mean, look at that rustic style. Oh my goodness, I just love how that sanded and I just thought it was really pretty that it was outlined in white because I painted it white first. Now as you can see, some of my stars were not dry so I just went through with my white paint marker and my paint and I just fixed up my stars. But after that, this was complete and it's just a little flag and it's perfect just to throw right on top of my tiered tray. This next one is kind of a fun one. So I found this glitter frame at the Dollar Tree and I popped out the back and got the little picture that came in it and traced it on this amazing scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I love that wood look and that um, sanded wood look. Oh my gosh, it's just so neat. So I popped that scrapbook paper back inside my frame and as you can see, it's very glittery, but for 4th of July, like I said, I don't really mind it. Next, I took this sheet of foam sticker, glitter stickers, and I'm taking where it says July 4, and I'm cutting off the 4 away from the July, and then I'm gonna put the July in the middle and the 4 right underneath. And I thought this came out super fun. I took my Waverly Antique Wax, of course, and I just dabbed it over just to kind of doll down that red glitter. And then I just felt like it needed something, but I couldn't figure out what. So after looking at it <laughs> for a while, I went ahead and I took some blue and white twine and I wrapped it around the top and the bottom. I thought that this little addition gave it that final touch that it needed and added some great detail. Then to finish it off, I took my makeup sponge with the Waverly Antique Wax and just dabbed it over my twine to help it blend in with the rest. And then I kind of just went over the frame too. And this is how it turned out and I love it. Next up, of course, we have the stack of books. So I'm taking this crate that I got from the Dollar Tree, peel off the tag, and I'm gonna paint this entire thing with white chalk paint. After it was dry, I'm taking my washi tape and I'm gonna create the stripes on the top. So I'm gonna put one stripe down, then I'm gonna do another one right beneath it as my spacer and then a third one underneath that. And then this is where I got smart and, and cut off smaller ones, and then I used that longer one to cover. And then once all of my washi tape was down, I used that crimson paint in red and that Waverly paint, and I went ahead and painted on the red stripes. Now, I realized after I did this that the red stripe should have been, technically been the top stripe, so next time I will um, paint it correctly. <laughs> Sorry about that. After I did the top, I also, as you can see, painted the top of the side of the books. Now look at those clean lines except for that little spot, but easy peasy, I just took a wipe and cleaned it off and then just dabbed some white paint over it to fix it. So now going back to the front of the books, I am going to leave the middle part white and then I'm gonna take these little stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put a few on that bottom little part of the books. And then after they're all down, I'm gonna take my ocean blue chalk paint and I'm gonna paint over the stars with that. After my blue was completely dry, I took my knife and I went ahead and pulled up all of the stars. This actually worked really well. I was quite pleased with how these came out. After that, I made a few touch-ups and then I took my sanding block and sanded the entire thing down. Look at that, oh my gosh, I love how that sanded. I just love that look. I love that rustic look. Sorry, I don't think I can say that enough. <laughs> so after that, I took these stencils from the Dollar Tree and I highly recommend these. They are perfect size for these stacked books and they are sticky. So you can put them right on there and they will stick. And then I used black acrylic paint and my makeup sponge and I just went ahead and dabbed that on there and I spelled out let 
Freedom Ring. Now, one thing you can see that I have a capital L and a capital E, and I didn't realize it, but I pulled off the lowercase t. I did not realize that until um, this was dry, so you just want to make sure that you're pulling the right uh, letter off. So then I went ahead and put on Freedom. Now because there's two E's and there's only one on the sheet, I put a C in there just as a space holder. And then I am drying in between, that way they don't smudge. But like I said, look how nice those came out. I absolutely love it and I think the font of these is perfect for 4th of July. It just looks like that old timey classy look and I really, really loved those. So look how those came out, Ugh, I love that. So after that was done, again, I made some little touch-ups and then I sanded over the letters just a little bit um, just to dull down the bold black of the letters. Next, I put some Mod Podge over the front to protect the paint and then I also hit the top as well. I really love finishing my projects with Mod Podge um, because like I said, it protects your paint. After that, I took this burlap polka dot ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna wrap it up on the top and the sides to cover the holes on the sides, but I decided that I actually wanted to fray the edges. So I'm just cutting off the wire and then I'm gonna pull some string off of all the sides to give it that frayed look. And then after I'm done with that, I'm gonna start on one side at the bottom and I'm going to start gluing it, but I'm gonna offset it and I'll show you what I mean in a second. But I'm gonna offset it because I'm actually gonna layer two of these. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do this twice. So you can see that I had it in the middle first and then I scooted it over so it covered half of that hole. I hope that made sense. And then I just every so often just tacked it down and you wanna make sure to pull it really tight. That way it's nice and even, it doesn't wrinkle up or come up. And then, like I said, I decided that I was going to double up, so I just repeated the same process and then added that second strip right next to this first strip. Then to go on top of that ribbon, I'm gonna take this navy blue and sil silver ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna put two right next to each other, so this is not directly in the middle, um, but it's kind of off to the side of the middle, if that makes sense. And then um, after I'm done with this piece, I'll cut off another piece and go the other way and put it right next to it. And now it looks like one big piece of ribbon. After that, I'm gonna take this red ribbon and this is going to go in the middle so it covers up the seam of the blue ribbon. And I'm gonna go all the way around just like I did with the other pieces. Now I'm not gonna lie, it does bug me that that red ribbon is a different color than the red paint. So I just took my Waverly Antique Wax and went over it to kind of make it not so bright. And then I hit the box as well, especially the side, so it makes it look like pages, book pages. But I really wanted to dab that on there. After that, I took this door hanger with bells that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I took all of the ribbons off, including that blue bow, which we are going to use. After that, I hot glued the bells on one side of my crate. That way it would read, let freedom ring. And then there you have the bells. So I just layered them on top of each other and but made sure that they were different lengths. Cut off any of the excess and now I'm going to take my that blue bow that came on the door hanger and it was perfect for this. I hot glued it down and then I'm just kind of tacking these down so they just don't like move everywhere and swing everywhere. 
I want them to stay in the front of this so the whole thing makes sense, obviously. <laughs> and then I had this raffia bow left over from a different DIY, so I just hot glued that on top of the blue bow. Next, I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe, and I'm just dulling down the glitter of these bells by rubbing that on there. To finish this, I am putting one of those foam glitter star stickers on top and adding some Waverly Antique Wax to that and this is how they came out and I love them all right next up we have to have some candy jars right so I found these amazing jars at the Dollar Tree and I first started off by painting the insides you can see that there's like an indent in there I painted it with white paint although you could probably skip this step because I actually went back and as you can see I painted it with black paint so I got two jars so I'm doing it to both and whatever I do to one I'm gonna do the other so I'm just gonna show you one of the jars but I just made sure to paint it now it does get kind of sloppy but as you saw I just used my finger to go ahead and clean up the edges and I did end up putting like two or three coats of the black because I really wanted it to be covered next up I took these silver thumbtacks and obviously they're not gonna go into the glass so I'm gonna cut off the tack part the sharp sharp part with my wire cutters and you want to be careful because they do fly across the room <laughs> if you don't like cover it with your hand and then after I had those all cut off, I hot glued one tack on each side of the middle part of the jar. I hope that makes sense, but you're about to see right now. So I put one on that side and one on the other side. Then I did the same thing on the other jar. Now I think I accidentally cut this out, but I did also take the antique wax and dab over those tacks to make them look a little rusty. I love that look too now it's time to work on the lids and I'm gonna just make them look galvanized and I love doing this it's so easy to do you seriously can't mess it up so to do this I'm just taking some black acrylic paint and that kitchen sponge and I am going to just dab it all over the lid then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some white on top of the black and then to blend it all together I have some silver metallic paint that I got from Walmart and I'm gonna dab that on here and you're gonna see in a minute the difference that the silver um, metallic paint makes because I put it on one and not the other so you're gonna see the difference there it is right there so the silver paint is going on now and look at it compared to the one sitting next to it and how much duller it is and how it all blended in. Isn't that crazy? Once my lids were dry, I took more of those foam star stickers and I hot glued a red one down on one and then a blue one on the other, although I'm gonna switch out the red one for a blue one um, in a minute and I will show you why in a second. So after that, I forgot that I wanted to add my Waverly Antique Wax to give it that rusty look. So I went ahead and just dabbed it all over and then I kind of used my finger to rub it in and I really thought that this brought it all together. I really loved how these lids came out. Actually, my husband said that it kind of gave off military vibes like camouflage. So I thought it might be cool to go back and add like a tan color and like that green color, but I really loved that. So next, I took the jar and I, these red stickers and I'm spelling out brave on one jar and then I'm gonna spell out free on the other jar. And I just decided to keep these on. I mean, usually I use these as stencils, but I just decided to keep these stickers on just how they are. So there's the brave and then an, an, I'm going to, oh, I forgot, I went over that, of course, with Waverly Antique Wax to doll down the brightness of the red as well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this jar, but like I said, I'm gonna spell out free. Next, I took my sand block and ever so lightly just sanded the letters. That way it gave it that rustic look. If a little bit of the white from the letters came up, like it tore, that's fine. I kind of liked it, but obviously I don't want them all to come up. And then again, to protect the letters and the paint on the bottom, I put a coat of Mod Podge on each of, of the jars. 
Then here's where I take off that red star and replace it with a blue star because um, I have the red writing now and they clashed. <laughs> so this looks so much better so I just replaced the lids and there you go. All right, next up are my famous rolling pins, the mini rolling pins. Now I make my own because I can never find them at Hobby Lobby and I just don't wanna pay a lot for them. So I took a plunger stick, I took off the sticker and before cutting this down, I did cut off the ends and then I measured five inches and I was able to get three five inch sticks for both. Now I do this a lot slower in other videos so if you wanna see how I do that, you can check the other tiered uh, tray videos out but then after that I painted one with white chalk paint the second one with red paint and the other one in white paint that's right I did two with white and one with red so then on one of the white uh, pins I took these star stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I put three stars right next to each other I'm sorry if this looks like this is going fast it's just that I've made these so many times that I just kind of go through it very quickly and then that way I can refer you to a slower video <laughs> but um yeah and then I went ahead and painted that with ocean paint then after that dried I went ahead and took off the stars and how satisfying is that they came out really well now to make the ends of my rolling pins I use earplugs <laughs> that I get from the Dollar Tree and I just simply hot glue them down on each end I do this before I paint them because it just makes it so much easier so then after they are glued down I took my red uh, crimson paint and I just simply painted the ends of my rolling pins. To finish this one off, I took this red and burlap, actually, striped ribbon that I got from Michaels on sale after Christmas, and I just tied a little bow around one end of my rolling pin, and I really love this because it's not red and white, it's red and burlap, and so it gives it that rustic look. Next, I took the other white um, rolling pin, and I just used my washi tape, and of course, I bet you can guess what we're about to do. <laughs> we're about to make stripes on this one. So I just put down two pieces of washi tape on that, and then once I had that down, I painted the open spaces with that red crimson chalk paint. After that was dry, I went ahead and hot glued my earplugs on this, and then I painted the earplugs with the blue ocean chalk paint. Now, I did decide not to add any bows or twine or anything to this. I just left it with the stripes and the blue ends because I think that it was detailed enough. On the red one, I took some of those red letters and I'm going to spell out America. <laughs> so, apostrophe M E R I C A. And I'm starting at one end and I'm putting the A first. So, I'm working my way backwards. And then, once all my letters are down, I'm going to paint over the entire thing with white Waverly chalk paint. After it's dry, I'm taking my knife again and I'm just going to peel up all of my letters. Now, you can see that I had some bleeding, but I just took my red paint and I I just cleaned it up and then I just made some touch-ups and then for this one after I hot glued my earplugs down I went ahead and painted these ones with the blue ocean chalk paint as well Then to complete this one, I took some blue and white twine and the red twine and I just tied a knot at the end of this rolling pin and that completed this little set of mini rolling pins and I cannot wait to put them on my tiered tray. These have been a huge hit and you guys have been loving them. All right, next up, this one is so super easy. So I found this amazing red truck sign from the Dollar Tree and I just bent the little stick back and forth um, and then it finally broke off. Then of course, it does look rustic, but I gotta add my touch so it blends in with the rest of my decor. So I just took my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm rubbing it all over the truck. 
after that, I just decided I was gonna make a stand for it and it's perfect as it is. So I just took some of those tumbling tower blocks and um, actually two to be exact, and I hot glued one um, behind each of the wheels. Then to help it blend in, I went ahead and I painted the tumbling tower blocks with that white chalk paint and that was it. Now we have this cute little standing red truck. All right, for our next DIY, I'm gonna take this big star that I actually got out of a pack, a big pack of wood shapes from the Crafter Square and the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna give it a really good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to take my washi tape and I'm just gonna put one piece down the middle. So I'm gonna start at the tippy top and then I'm just going to make sure it's in the middle. And then after that, I'm gonna paint one side of it with the ocean blue chalk paint. Look at that clean line. <laughs> Ooh, it's getting late and I'm getting slap happy. All right, next I'm gonna move that piece of tape and I'm gonna put it and I'm gonna cover the blue part this time. And then on this, this side, we're gonna do the stripes. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my washi tape stripes. <laughs> and then I'm gonna paint the open spot with that crimson paint. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull up all of the paint. And as you can see, I accidentally have some gaps there, so I'm just taking my paintbrush and just fixing it. And then after that, I'm gonna take this smaller wooden um, star that also came in that pack, and by using a baby wipe and my antique wax, I'm gonna stain it. Then I'm gonna hit the big star with the stain, of course, too. Then to blend it all together, I'm gonna to take my sanding block and I'm gonna sand down both stars. Look how that sanded, oh, I love that. Ugh, I just love that. All right, so next I'm going to make uh, some of my touch-ups again. And then there we go, I'm gonna sand the smaller star. And then by using the brush that I used to paint the white on, I didn't even dip it. Again, I'm just using whatever's on the brush and I'm just go outlining the star and then lightly putting it in the middle. Then I'm going to hot glue that to the middle of my star. Next, I'm going to take this race car that I had left over from another DIY and I'm going to use my wire cutters to pop off that bead on top. Next, I'm going to take my spackling and just uh, cover or fill in the two front holes I'm not gonna fill in the top hole though because we will need that then after the spackling dries I'm gonna use my sand block to sand it down after that I'm gonna give this a coat of white Waverly chalk paint although you can probably skip that because I end up painting the front of it with red crimson paint but I did leave the top white after that was dry, I took my letters again and I'm gonna spell out United We Stand. So I did United up top and then We Stand at the bottom. Once I had those down and positioned correctly, then I took my white Waverly chalk paint again and I painted over my letters with that. Now I was very careful because I did not want my letters to come up. So you just wanna lightly paint it, but you wanna make sure that you do give it a good coat. Then of course, once it's dry, I took my knife and I scraped up all of my stickers. That actually worked out really well. Look how nice those turned out. Now there was a little bit of bleeding, so I just made my touch-ups. After that, I sanded the whole thing down, and because it was red on the bottom, it actually sanded red on the edges, and I really liked that. After that, I went ahead and took that star stencil again, and I stenciled three little stars in each of the corners. Now you can see that I already did the other corner, but I'm gonna do it again because look at it. So I ended up painting that over with white chalk paint, and then in a sec you'll see me go over that. But I love how these little stars came out. Look how neat that looks. So there I go, I painted over it white, it dried, and now I'm gonna do take two on these, and this one, this time, it turned out so much better. So I loved the little um, detail that these little stars gave. So once my blue stars were dry, I took my antique Waverly wax on a makeup sponge and I went around the edges and then I did hit the middle and the top of my little race car. Again, we are distressing everything. <laughs> 
After that, I took a small dowel rod that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna paint it with black acrylic paint. Then once that dries, I'm going to hot glue it to the back of our big star. So I, I hot glued it kind of towards the bottom, but you're gonna see that I actually move it up to make it shorter. And then I put some hot glue in the hole up top of our race car and I stick our star in. So here's where, oh, I had to make a touch up there. Then here's where I realized that it's kind of too tall. So I went ahead and pushed it down and then I ended up adding a ton more hot glue and then I put a piece of duct tape over it to give it extra support and now we have this awesome united we stand star sign and this was an inspiration from Hobby Lobby actually all right it's our last one we made it now this is not even I feel bad calling this a DIY it's so easy but I found this perfect camper and it was painted like this at the Dollar Tree so of course I'm taking my antique Waverly wax and I'm rusticing it up a little bit <laughs> so then I'm gonna take my white paint and basically everything that was gray except for that tire I'm painting in white now I'm not doing a good job painting on purpose because again rustic look so after that, I'm going to take, kind of brush over the um, fender. And yes, thank you to everyone who corrected me on my last patriotic video. It's a fender, I know, I, I knew that, I just forgot, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna take this um, flag, a uh, little pick, and I'm going to cut it down so it will fit in the little window. You'll see right there. After that, I'm gonna hot glue that in, and then I'm gonna take my Waverly Antique Wax and just kind of doll it down with that, and then I'm gonna go over the top of it one more time, and that is it. This was our last kind of DIY, but now we have this cute little camper. Okay, now it's time for our final reveal. What do you think? I absolutely love how each one of these little DIYs came out. This tear tray is going to be filled with so much red, white, and blue, and patriotic pride, and I am so excited to decorate it. You're gonna have to let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite. Honestly, I cannot choose. I really love all of them, but I bet you once I fill those little candy jars with my favorite red, white, and blue peanut M&Ms, that would probably become my favorite and I bet a household favorite too. Clearly my tear tray is not decorated quite yet so you're gonna have to join me in June when I do my decorate with me coffee bar for the 4th of July. So like I said definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when I upload that video. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you love what you saw today. It really helps my channel to grow, but not only that, but it tells YouTube that you like seeing my content and that you want to see more, so a lot more of my videos will pop up on your homepage. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you were inspired to create your own DIYs and got a lot of ideas to decorate your home for the 4th of July. So many of these projects were so simple to do and really did not cost a lot of money. And I used a lot of supplies that I already had in my stash. So that means that this whole tiered tray vignette is very low budget and cost effective, but looks so neat. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye.